Welcome back to Studio Chatter. Our next guest is a motivational expert, gratitude ambassador, and public speaker. Welcome Laura Solorzano, the CEO of Remarkable Now, to the table. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, Thank you. lady. It's Hello. good to meet you. Good to be here. Well, Glad I've been here. dying to get you in here forever. <laughs> so we met at the dance studio. Yes. You so are. you have mutual friends. Yes. We yes. do. And you know our friend. So Racheline Talbot. Yes. She's so, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I will call you a transplant. Yeah. Oh, I definitely am. <laughs> I am a transplant. Newly here from Arizona. Newly here. Yep. Okay. okay. So tell us how that came to be. Um, we basically felt like this is where we were supposed to be, so we uprooted our seven kids and moved to oh, wow. Utah within two weeks. No oh, wow. way. People are yes. loving Utah and Spanish sport, guys. Uh -huh. We were supposed to move to Mesa, actually, and then wow. we just had an experience where we knew this is where we were supposed okay. to be, so we're here. Well, so did you, like do you have relatives or anything We here do. My bit? husband's family is here. His dad actually runs res has restaurants. Um, all over, well, Spanish Fork, Pace, and Nephi Delta. So oh, wow. his family's here. So okay. that's, that's nice. remarkable enough. All yeah, right. right, seven kids. That's just enough. <laughs> right. This is true. Well, and, and trying to, to balance all of that. Or crazy, but one of those. <laughs> yeah. So when did you start the business? Before you moved here or yes, after? Yes, before. I started the business after my seventh, after my son Campbell was born. Probably okay. about a year after he was born, and he's four. Oh, okay. And what so initiated about three years. the starting of? I started it because I had struggled with an eating disorder for about 16 years, okay. and I didn't recover until my daughter Grace was born, so she's my sixth. And then I felt after Campbell was born to speak about it and initially felt very hesitant to talk mm -hmm. about it um, because we were in Prescott where I had grown up and where we had been for 15 years, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is kind of scary. But ultimately, I was driven by the idea of bringing light to a subject that's not talked about very often. Mm -hmm. And once I did open up and talk about it, it was wonderful because it just brought in so many people who were also hurting and felt like they couldn't talk about it. And it also helped me, like I think in my yeah. healing, because I felt like, oh my gosh, I wasn't alone that whole time where people that are hurting or that struggle with disordered eating or mm -hmm. any struggle feel very alone. And, and your brain will tell you, you're the only one who struggles like this. And so it's just been a really neat process as I've been able to speak to women all over the nation actually and, and just bring light and hope to something that does not have to define them. Forever. And what was the game changer for you? What helped you get better, get past that? Hump? Yeah, there was a big game changer for me. I, I had gone to therapy after therapy. I tried everything. It wasn't that I didn't want to recover. Mm -hmm. um, the game changer was gratitude. I decided mm -hmm. one day to scrap all the things that weren't working and um, I, had, I had developed a really bad thyroid condition and so nothing worked for me anymore, which was actually a blessing in disguise. And I was like, well, I need to figure out who Lara Campbell is. That's my maiden name, and that's what I was kind of thinking of. And gratitude came into my mind from a talk that I had heard years ago of a man that I really respect who had said three things he was grateful for every night before he went to bed. And it stuck in my mind, and I thought, well, if he needed that every night, then I need it every morning and every night. And I started doing five things I was grateful for every morning and five things I was grateful for every night without any other change. That was wow. it. And the beautiful thing was in the beginning, my gratitude, you can see that it's all about my kids and my husband and everyone mm -hmm. around me, my parents. And that went on for a while, but I didn't stop. I didn't give up. But I love going back and looking at those beginning journals because you can see the transformation of everyone around me to finally mm -hmm. me. Yeah, that I'm a good mother and I'm patient and the qualities that I always possessed but never really knew because I was so focused on what I wasn't. Mm. And so it was a really beautiful transformation. And then having the belief in myself through that gratitude practice gave me the tools and the courage to continue with more tools to recover. And it's just a beautiful thing. Gratitude, I always say, is free. And so I think we take it for granted. Like I tell clients that I work with, you know, you would come and pay me $20,000 to help your daughter, but you could use gratitude for free. I mean, what if you came and told me I need help with my kids and I said, it's $10,000, go get a gratitude journal. You know, like, yeah, right. then we would do it. We'd be like, okay, I'll do it. I'll right. do it every night and I'll be religious about it. So it's, it can be taken for granted because we don't realize the power of it, but it is free and all you need is a pen and paper or just peace and stillness in your heart. And it the, can there's dramatically some writing change. it though and getting in that habit. Yes, when, when I studied more about the brain and the, and the effects of the brain, 
I realized that thinking it is one act, but then when you write it and also when you say it out loud, every time you add something to it, it 10Xs it. So if I were to think it and then I write it, that 10Xs it. And then if I'm to say it out loud, it's just another um, affirmation to my brain that I believe it. And our brains are wired to go out and find what we tell it, whether mm -hmm. it knows it's true or not. I totally agree so, that. Yes. So my favorite quote, and it's in my gratitude journal that I created mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the adult and the children's, is what you focus on grows. Yes. It's just like, you know, when it's you want to get like a new car. It's true, or anything, <laughs> though, the more you focus on that one thing, you'll go down that rabbit yes. hole of that And thing. you'll see it because right. your mind is wired to find what you're looking for. Yes. And that's the beautiful thing of our brains. It's not a bad thing, mm -hmm. but we'll start to look for that in our life and we will find validation because our brain wants to help us out. So we get to decide. You know, if do we want to focus on, this on end or that the good end. or do we want to look for all the things that we're not because we'll find that. It will come. Right. It's so true. I battled with some depression and postpartum after my oh, second baby and it was rough and I've always been a pretty clear mind and to go down there and not have my mind cooperating with me and like I couldn't talk myself out of yeah. silly things. Yeah. Like I moved into a new home and I had gray carpet and for some reason that was bad. Yeah. And I became so fixated on that. I yeah. could, people would tell me, well, yeah, it is, but why is that wrong? And right. it was like such a battle. But I remember I got medications and help, but I remember my mom saying to me finally, like, Angie, go out and serve. Instead, when those bad thoughts creep in, try yeah. and find something good to go do or a service to go do. And that was a game changer for yeah, me. I, I don't that. know why, but it was like focusing mm -hmm. not on myself, but outside, yeah. and it was hard. And it's a form of gratitude when you go out yes, and serve too. Right, it is. You're yeah. showing that you're grateful for the opportunity to be helping other people. Right, right. It always yeah. pays you back. And yeah. did you say that you created a gratitude journal, like one that you sell? Yes, which is okay. actually kind of a funny story. <laughs> okay. because. I don't have a degree in anything, but I had recovered and, and everyone knew how well it was going that they, I started getting clients. And I had 45 year old women down to like 12 year old girls and it was going so good. I would email them these morning and evening pages. Well, they were my pages for, that I had created as my own tools for my recovery. And every pr client would come to me and be like, I can't let these go. I take them everywhere I go. I print them all really? out. And my husband was like, you have a gratitude journal. Like you need to, you need to make this into a real journal. And I was like, no, that's <laughs> silly. I'm not, that's not my talent. Right. right. And I was like, that's fine. I just have like 20 clients I need to make. And then like maybe a month later, uh, my doorbell rang and there was a box of 500 journals. He created them for me. No way. And he printed them so for me. So bits and pieces of your gratitude like throughout it? Was, it? it was just my exact, it's very, very specific. It was very specific tools with very specific outcomes for my clients. It works amazing. It's not just haphazard. That's why I was like, oh, it's not for everyone. But it turns out it's for everyone. It helps yeah. anyone who's in a dark place or just needs to focus on the good and change their life. And then because I wasn't thinking business-wise, I was like, oh, that's cute. I'll, I, I don't have that many clients, babe, you know? <laughs> um, but one of my best friends who's huge Instagrammer, her, her sister had passed away, and I was like, oh, Hosea's just made these for me. I'll give you one and, and use it. Maybe it'll help. And a month later, she got on and was like, this has changed my life, oh my and they gosh. were gone. And then they were gone again, and then they were wow. gone again, and then my kids that's loved incredible. it so much that they helped me create a children's gratitude journal that I'm really obsessed with. <laughs> Wow. Probably even more oh, than the adult one. Oh. This could be a yeah. book club item, but I really so want to. So this is all at Remarkable Now, life. right? Yes, this is okay. under Remarkable Now. And the children, the, the adult one is a morning and an evening and has different prompts. The children is daily, because that's too much. It's three mm -hmm. things they're grateful for, something they're looking forward to in their day. And it's very like specific because what if you're looking forward to something that's coming up and you're excited about it, it shows that you can make it through the day through the bumps mm -hmm. and the things that happen. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other side of the journal is just activities. Like who would I give a fist bump today to? I'm gonna give myself a high five because, and it has different fun activities. So it makes it fun, it's not heavy. My kids love doing it. It's, it's doing all the work by making it fun if that makes sense. Yeah. Not like this is a chore. So it's it actually It does really sound fun. very healing. Yeah. My kids have loved Words it. Words of affirmation. Lots of kids have loved I it. I love actually. some of the things that you share on your Instagram also <laughs> because it, it well, it's just showing some of the fun things that you do with your own children and that there isn't necessarily and that there doesn't have to be perfection right. in I everything. Think that's so, so the important. fun moments that you have with yeah. them and <laughs> Yeah. We're a little crazy. No, it's I great. think there is such a need 
to focus on our kids' strengths right now, not mm -hmm. on what how they could do better to fit into this mold mm -hmm. or to the, be best at their whatever their, their sport or their talent, but to focus on all the good that they possess and then just have fun and celebrate mm -hmm. their strengths. You know, I think it's super important because we're at a time in our life where all of our kids are running into these struggles and this feeling of not enough, which creates other problems. It starts with knowing their strengths and their talents, what their, what their remarkable strengths are now. So I was just talking to my kids, in fact, about technology and how it, there's so much just fed through us mm -hmm. so quickly, so fast. Social media is a big Yeah, it is. Us. And so the mental crisis, I think, is huge right now yeah. with our children. Yeah, it's a big problem. And it starts in the home with us creating a safe place for our kids. Yeah. So if we can teach them about the power of gratitude that it literally can transform their life, we're giving them the greatest tool. And then if we are the ones to celebrate what they're good at, instead of and being building the ones confidence to, yes, in that way, instead of finding they will it not somewhere. find it anywhere else. Right. But with us, so yeah. it's an awesome opportunity for us to really build our children into resilient, amazing people that they already are, but they need to know that they are and stuff. Right, and that, not waiting, know? I think, until they're in a really bad place. Yes. Like if they look and feel healthy, like still build upon that. Yes, mm -hmm. that's actually why I named it Remarkable Now, because I spent mm. so many years waiting until I was remarkable, right. or the perfect size, or the perfect whatever. Right. And so it's all about finding the remarkable in yourself now, not until you get to a certain okay. point. Because life is happening oh. now. Yeah, so and everyone be... has it in them right now. They came inherently gifted with it, and so we can find it in everybody now in this moment. I love that so much. There were two things also. I mean, not that I'm stalking you completely, but, <laughs> but, but there was another something else that you had posted on there that had said, turn to your home instead of your phone, Yeah, which is, is so completely true. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, put, put down the phone mm -hmm. and yeah. turn to your home, focus on the kids, focus on the now, yeah. focus on what's important, and then Grown women, as well as young women, can get so focused on body image. Yes, and, I, huge and even when we were in Salt Lake the other day yeah. at, at a, the dance convention, you're like, just embrace it. Just yeah, wear the swimsuit. She didn't want to wear a go swimsuit. For it. I was like, <laughs> I say it's that not going to get better. With you it. have a swimsuit <laughs> body if you have a body and you wear a swimsuit. That's, yeah. You have a beach like body that. if you have a body and you go to the beach. It's Took me true. years to learn that, but uh -huh. we're missing out on so much by go worrying that. about what people yes. think about. Right. What yes. we we're and doing we instead of just all have like beach bodies because we have a body. We're gonna go to the beach. Oh, I so love that love attitude. That. I have a Lake Powell body. You do. I'm going to Lake Powell. <laughs> you do. I have a body. You do. Oh my gosh! Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. 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 Yeah.